Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to incorporate Box2D lights. So all we're going to do is get the essentials set up so we can uh, get rolling with getting into other types of lights that you can use and how to position them onto certain bodies or how to orient them. I'm going to be going through cone light, point light, chain light, and I, I think that's the essential three that you, you need to know. Um, I'm also going to demonstrate how to set up ambient lighting and various other things like that that you can tweak with the ray handler. So first things first, uh, we have this basic game state set up and if uh, you want to know how to set up game states, I have a generic version of a game state manager. Very, very simple. Um, as you can see, I have multiple states here on the left. Uh, I have a tutorial for that. Uh, so if you want to know how I set this up, you're more than welcome to go check out that video now and come back in a minute. Um, so just for here, uh, in this state that I'm currently working in, uh, you can kind of see the code, pretty basic stuff. We just have, we set up our Box2D world, a Box2D debug renderer, and we have a body that we keep track of, a reference to called the, uh, so to speak, player. Um, I also set a linear damping just so his velocity stops. That's mostly for my simple controls that I have implemented down here. And here's a quick view of that. If you want to pause the video and check out what I did there, um, you're more than welcome to. Um, and then I'm also interpolating to that player reference or body and uh, just kind of following the player. So from that, uh, let's jump right in and kind of get the basics going in this video. And all we're really going to do is see what we need to even start working with Box2D lights. So the first thing you're going to need is a what is called a ray handler. So that's going to be private ray handler, and we'll just call that ray handler. Um, and this is going to do a lot of the heavy work or heavy lifting for you. So once you get that out of the way, you're pretty much already halfway there, uh, just getting it initialized. So ray handler equals new ray handler, and you're going to want to pass it your already initialized world. Um, and then you'll also need to remember to dispose of that. So that is another disposable object. Dispose. Okay, perfect. So essentially, we've already done half the work we need to do. And uh, now if we run it, um, we're not going to get anything because we haven't really updated or rendered anything. But this is just what I have set up. So you can see the difference after I add in the code that's going to have the box for D lights start working. Um, so without having any lights in your ray handler, uh, you're only going to see just a black page because everything is dark and uh, we haven't set any ambient light or anything. So um, to get the ray handler to start working, uh, after your world step, I, I figure this is probably the best place to put it, um, you want to do ray handler dot update. Because we have this broken up into update and render method with our game state manager, um, there is a ray handler dot uh, handler dot update and render method. Now, if you're just using the standalone render without making your own side update method, you don't have to break it up like I did here. Um, but I just do that to keep the logic and the render code separate, as I've mentioned before, is kind of good practice. Um, so after your box D renderer, remember the render order does matter. So if you're setting the ray handler to render after your box D renderer, and I'll actually show you that here. Um, so ray handler dot render, and really that's all you need to do to get your uh, lights to start working in there. Um, and you'll notice that I have it rendering after the box D renderer. So now if I render or uh, run it now, you'll notice that the screen will just be black. And there we go. So now we know the lights are kind of working, or the light system has been implemented, it's rendering. Um, but let's kind of show you how the render order will affect it. So anything you draw above the ray handler after the ray handler renders will just render like normal um, with no shadows, no nothing. It, it, it won't be affected. Uh, by being covered by some of the ray casting. So we'll close that 
and we'll actually revert that real quick. Um, but just as an extra side bit to this video, I think I'm going to add in ambient light just so you guys can get going with that and be able to see your objects after you've added the box 2D light renderer and update methods. So we're going to do ray handler dot set ambient light. We're just going to change that to 0.7. Um, and that is a value between 0 to 1, uh, just so you know. So we're going to run it one more time and kind of see the difference that we got. Remember, I moved that ray handler render after the Boxer D debug render. So now it's kind of a darker gray, a little bit dim, but we can still see our box now. Uh, however, it's not as bright pink as it was when I had the Boxer D renderer running or rendering after the lights. So with that, uh, I hope you're going to enjoy working with Boxer D lights soon. I'm going to be putting up more tutorial videos for that in just a little bit. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, like, comment, subscribe as usual and thank you.